So troubleshooting slowness on a network begins with collecting the right packets in the right place at the right time with the right method. Otherwise, it's easy to overcapture or miss the problem completely, which makes the analysis part harder on ourselves. So for the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at where to capture on the network. Now, there are several points on a network path where we can collect data. The most common spots are at the client end, somewhere on the network infrastructure along the way, using a span port or a tap, or at the server end. Now, for me, typically, I like to start analyzing a problem by capturing at the client end. Now, this is where the traffic load should be the lowest, and it's also a lot easier to see what network services and applications are being accessed. Now, capturing on the client end can best be accomplished by spanning the port that the client is connected to on the nearest switch and forwarding that traffic over to an analyzer on an adjacent port, as you see pictured here. Now, a span will require a configuration change on the switch, so make sure that you really know what you're doing if you choose to go with this method. Now, some people will also just install Wireshark on the server itself and capture from there. Now, this certainly doesn't break rules, but ideally, we want to capture outside of the device under test. There's a lot of reasons for that, but basically, installing Wireshark will add more load to the system, and the packet capture driver may not display data exactly as it looks on the wire, which can be misleading. Now, we're going to talk about that more in just a second, but in short, capture on the span port if you can, capture on the end device if you absolutely have to. Now we also mentioned a few seconds ago that it's possible to capture data using a tap. Now a tap is a hardware device that physically goes in line on a copper or a fiber connection and allows us full wire speed access. Now this is the best way to capture packets. However, it's also the most expensive and may not be possible depending on our budget. But as a best practice, it's a good idea to install taps at key locations on the network ahead of time so that packets can be captured at any time for analysis. Now, when we're troubleshooting slow file transfers or slow applications, it's absolutely ideal to capture packets both at the client and the server end at the same time. There's a lot of reasons for this that we'll go into in this course. But basically, requests can be seen leaving the client and then arriving at the server as well as any transactions that the server makes to other systems, such as databases, to fulfill that request. Now, dual side captures can also help us to see if one direction or the other is suffering from packet loss. As we mentioned before, capturing physically on the client or on the server has its drawbacks. Now, after being installed, the Wireshark packet driver will bind to the capture device and capture packets before the TCP IP stack handles all of its tasks. Now, this is especially the case when TCP segmentation offloading is in place on the station. Now, for example, Wireshark could show you packets that are illegally large for transit on the network. So, for example, you might see a packet that's 64,000 bytes. However, if you had captured those packets on the network itself outside of the client or server under test, you would have seen these segments of data broken up into legally sized packets on the actual wire. When we capture physically on the client or server as well, we also run the risk of missing packets altogether due to high traffic loads. Now remember that laptops and servers can't always keep up with the traffic load, especially when they're doing a lot of different tasks at once. So again, Capture on the client server if you absolutely have to, but a best practice is to do so on a third device from the network itself.